This presentation by me, Krasimir Kvartchev, entitled After Verkel's Discovery, Aspect is no longer a mystery, but aspectology needs a reform, was made at the 16th Annual International Conference on Languages and Linguistics in July 2023 in Athens, Greece. Hello, my name is Krasimir Kvartchev. I'm from Sofia, Bulgaria. I retired several years ago, but I continue to do research in theoretical linguistics, my dedication. I have several papers published by Etner. I am the author of the only monograph published in the year 2000 on compositional aspect, specifically in English. And I have just started a series of lectures on compositional aspect in YouTube. But I also have a hobby. I visit inhabited Greek islands and photograph them. As of today, I have conquered, so to say, and photographed 85 out of the 92 Greek islands with five or more residents. This presentation covers a review article of a monograph by Henk Verkel, entitled The Compositional Nature of Tense, Mood and Aspects published uh, by Cambridge University Press, Cambridge Studies in Linguistics, 167 Cambridge, 2022. This is uh, the cover of the book. About the review article. This review article on a new monograph by the finder of compositional aspect is published in the Athens Journal of Philology, here it is summarized. Verkel's book crowns his research that was carried out within six decades and led to a completely novel understanding of aspect. The epochal discovery of compositional aspect and its description in a theoretical model boils down to the establishment of two semantical syntactic schemata, a perfective and an imperfective one, which will be briefly described. Defects, flaws and omissions in the model are also identified. Verkel's discovery is widely recognized, but his theory is misconceptualized by a large part of the aspectological community. The misconceptualization is analyzed against my own model that I claim to provide a most adequate explanation of compositional aspect vis-a-vis -vis verbal aspect and to do ultimate justice to Verkel's over. Aspect as the contrast between perfectivity and imperfectivity. Aspect is the distinction between perfectivity and imperfectivity. Perfectivity is a situation bounded on the time axis with a pragmatic result, a reached telos, and imperfectivity is a non-bounded situation. For example, we have imperfectivity in sentences such as John drank or John drank beer. And we have perfectivity in sentences such as John drank a beer. Prior to Verkel 1971, perfectivity and imperfectivity in English and other non-verbal aspect languages was conceptualized through Wendler's well-known classes of situations states, activities, accomplishments and achievements, the first two imperfective, the latter two perfective. Thus John fell or John died or John awoke and John opened the door or John wrote a letter are achievements and accomplishments respectively and both types of situations are perfective. John was drinking or John drank and John was studying or John studied, are activities or states, and both are imperfective. Vertels to aspectual schemata. They are a decisive step forward as they cover whole sentences, not just verb phrases as in Wendler's classification, and represent the very nucleus of his contribution to understanding and explaining the way aspect is realized in languages in which it is not located in the verb, such as the Slavic ones, Greek, Georgian, Chinese, etc. Consider the following sentences. They are Verkels. 
The first sentence. Policemen, policemen, plural, walked from the mint to the dam. This is an imperfective sentence. 1b. Grethe walked from the mint to the dam. This is a perfective sentence. For months, patients here died of jaundice. This is an imperfective sentence. But sentence 2b, these two patients died of jaundice, is a perfective one. Sentence 3a, bombs e exploded everywhere in town. This is an imperfective sentence. But sentence 3b, the bomb exploded, is a perfective one. These sentences demonstrate how subject NP reference impact the effectuation of aspect through their quantificational status. For more detail on the compositional effectuation of aspect, check out my papers in the Athens Journal of Philology. Now, Verkel's two aspectual schemata. Plus SQA means specified quantity of something. And plus add to means italic verb. A minus value is a leak. And the rule is, if a sentence contains plus values only, it is perfective. For example, the following sentence. A student sent the Labour Party badge to a Congress Gorba is a perfective sentence. Why? Because we have a student, the subject, which is plus SQA. We have sent a plus add to verb. Or you can also uh, call it a telic verb. Uh, then we have the Labour Party badge as a direct object, and this is plus SQA, specified quantity. And then we have a Congress goer, which is again plus SQA, specified quantity, or, you, or we can call it bounded, and the sentence is perfective. The rule is, uh, the other rule, another rule is, if a leak occurs, or if leaks occur in a sentence, the sentence becomes imperfective. For example, sentence 4b, a student sent the Labour Party badge to Congress goers. Here in Congress goers we have minus SQA, that is non-boundedness. And this is a leak. A leak, this is a Verkeulian term, a term um, which is Verkeul's. He invented it. Sentence 4b. Students sent the Labour Party badge to Congress goers. What do we have here? Here we have, again, this is an imperfective sentence, and here we have what? Students, which is a, which is a leak because it is minus SQA, that is non-boundedness, and we have Congress goers, which is again a leak, a second leak in the sentence, again minus SQA, that is non-boundedness, and the sentence is, for this reason, imperfective, because note that the verb is absolutely the same. But uh, it is the same as in 4a, where sent uh, uh, is associated with the perfective sentence, and here in 4b and in 4c, uh, uh, the, the sentences are imperfective, although the verb is absolutely the same. Now, let's have 5a. Sentence 5a. Mozart composed this sonata. This is a perfective sentence. There is no leak. F sentence 5b. Mozart loved this sonata. This is an imperfective sentence and there is a leak. Where is the leak? The leak is in the verb because it is the verb loved, which is a minus add to verb in Verkel's terminology. Or you can call it uh, a non-telic verb, an atelic verb, and this is a leak. And because there is a leak, the sentence is imperfective. And then let's have 5c, Mozart composed sonatas. Do we have a leak here? Yes, we have. It is in sonatas, which is, uh, which is the uh, direct object. It is uh, a minus SQA. That is, uh, it is non-bounded. And it is a leak, and for this reason, the sentence is imperfective. Verkel calls this feature algebra. It is a very complex issue, 
that cuts across the whole of the semantical, syntactic, lexical and grammatical domains of a compositional aspect language, be it English or any other language. Those who have not dealt, dealt with this problem should simply skip it here. A glimpse at my own theoretical model. Consider the following four simple sentences, so to say simple sentences, let's see if they're simple or not, constructed by me. And the sentences are 6a, the kid fed the cat. This is a perfective sentence. Why? Because there is no leak. Sentence 6b, the kid fed cats. Do we have a leak here? Yes, we have, in cats. And for this reason, this is an imperfective sentence, because the direct object is minus SQA, or non-bounded. Sentence 6c, kids fed the cat. This is again an imperfective sentence. Why? Because we have kids. This is a leak. This is minus SQA. This is non-boundedness. And sentence 6d, kids fed cats. Here we have what? Here we have not one, but two leaks in kids and in cats. Uh, why do we have leaks? Because kids and cats, these are NPs that have no article, uh, no other quantifier or determiner or anything like that. And they uh, explicate what? They explicate non-boundedness minus SQA in Verkeil's terms. A question arises. Are these sentences simple? No, 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 no. They are simple only at first sight. In fact, they conceal, let me uh, put it this way, innumerable intertwined complexities, regularities and interdependencies. What is the first thing that strikes the eye? It is that all these sentences contain a single verb form fed, but the first one the first sentence is perfective and contrasts to the other two. The major difference between Verkel's understanding and mine is that I interpret the reference of NP situation participants in sentences not as physical entities but as temporal ones. Verkel does not do so. He treats them as atemporal entities. To get an idea of the temporality of NP situation participants, consider the NP's kids in sentence 6c above. Are these physical entities, children standing in the same place and feeding the cat? No, 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 no. Kids here stands for kinetic recurring entities appearing one after the other to feed the cat. And even the cat is also a kinetic entity, a recurring one, appearing every time to be fed. <laughs> Note that the cat is uh, nominally uh, a single thing, yes? But no, this is not a single thing. This is a recurring thing. It appears every time to be fed. <laughs> this is a complex issue that has to do with the limited capacity of human memory to register all entities as kinetic ones. For detail, see my papers in the Athens Journal of Philology. On defects, flaws and omissions in Verkel's work. These are discussed in detail in the review article forthcoming in the Athens Journal of Philology. Actually, it is already published. Here I will point out only one. Verkel has always insisted that perfectivity as a sentence level value is destroyed or eliminated when negativity is introduced, as in English 7b, sentence 7b versus sentence 7a. Mary wrote a letter, Mary wrote the letter. This, Verkel says, is a perfective sentence. But, Verkel says, Mary did not write a letter or the letter, or Mary wrote no letter. This is an imperfective sentence. It is strange why Verkel has always, for decades, insisted that negativity turns a perfective sentence into an imperfective one. Comparisons with data from verbal aspect languages unambiguously demonstrate that perfectivity does not turn into imperfectivity after the introduction of negativity. Compare Bulgarian, the Bulgarian sentences 8 and the Greek sentences 9. 
the Bulgarian sentences are Mary napisa pismo, which means Mary wrote a letter. This is a perfective verb. And if we make the sentence negative, Mary ne napisa pismo, which means Mary did not write a letter, this sentence remains perfective. The, per the verb itself remains perfective. The same is in Greek. Conclusion. Vercel's latest book crowns his over spanning a period of some six decades of creative insight represented by several monographs and countless papers, despite certain mistakes, faults, and the limitations of an approach heavily relying on bizarre concepts of formal logic and philosophy, some of them distanced from natural language reality. Verkel's enterprise marks a new era in modern linguistics, allowing such cross-language and universal generalizations to be made, not always from his own perspective, that were unthinkable and unimaginable earlier, today and in the foreseeable future. It remains to be recognized that, despite an analysis too heavily based on Dutch and English, Despite a failure to identify the essence of Slavic aspect and verbal aspect in general, despite flaws due to the specificity of formal logic, despite contradictions in semantic descriptions of certain sentence types, despite a rigid approach disallowing non-prototypical aspectual meanings of sentences belonging to either of the two schemata, despite some other mistakes and omissions, it undoubtedly takes nothing short of a genius to be able to see through the thick curtain of innumerable, intricate and controversial data in numerous domains, the system of explicating perfectivity and imperfectivity in nonverbal aspect languages. Verkel managed to capture mentally and conceptualize in depth the monstrously comp complex system of compositional aspect something no one had ever planned to do, let alone managed, something earlier thought impossible to achieve, something still misunderstood by most linguists. He crafted with precision two almost faultless aspectual semantical syntactic schemata for compositional aspect languages that, with some modifications, are applicable to verbal aspect languages as well, which ultimately means universally for all languages, with no exception at all. Verkel's aspectual schemata will go down in history as benchmarks in linguistics, together with Wendler's and his colleagues' time schemata, with Wendler's, uh, no, with Verkel's theoretical model on a higher footing, due to the identification of the operation of compositional aspect at the sentence level and the incorporation into the model of the impact of the subject and the precise contribution of the semantics of the verb. It remains for the linguistic community to live up to this epochal achievement by carrying out a reform in aspectology, because the compositional aspect theory remains severely misconceptualized. It needs to be understood properly Certain modifications and improvements must be introduced in it and incorporated into the existing models for carrying out future successful studies on the intriguing phenomenon of aspect, whether in verbal or compositional disguise. Thank you very much for your attention. And, of course, the paper, the review article, after Verkel's discovery aspect is no longer a mystery, but Aspectology needs a reform, and it is a review article, Henk Verkel, The Compositional Nature of Tense Mood and Aspect, by me, Krasimir Kabakchev, is published in the Open Access Athens Journal of Philology, Volume 10, Issue 3, September 2023, pages 247-274. Thank you very much once again.